Yay, we are live. Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and launch our PowerPoint. And hit play. All righty. Oh, welcome. Oh, I'm going to move that over a little bit. Hang on. I have a big block going across. Exactly. So maybe this will be better. Be better. Get it in the right spot. Um, for those of you viewing it, you can change your viewing to so you have um, just a tile in the corner or get rid of your um, videos in the corner or gallery. If you're missing the words on the slide, you can change your view um, from the top screen. Uh, from gallery to single to on, all of that is um, options in your viewing. Um, you can also uh, use the chat button, raise your hand, that kind of thing as well. So I am not on the first slide. So let me do, do, do. Okay. I got to change my uh, view. Okay, we're good. So first of all, welcome to our talk number 17. Canine Good Citizen and Trick Dog Titles. With us tonight is our puppy expert, Allison Rosenberg from South Carolina. She is a CGC evaluator and tester and a trick dog evaluator and a puppy trainer and coach. Um, so she is gonna lead us tonight. Allison, what did I leave out? What did, what did I leave out of your titles there? Can you hear me okay? I, I have can. a delay. Oh, that's just internet. I think I, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna switch to my phone because it keeps you're like breaking up, and I don't know if you can hear me. We and can I can't see any slides. We can hear you fine. You can. You can. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, cool. Did you put the slide up? Because I can't I see did. it. I did. I did. We're on the welcome slide. I... Yeah. That's not coming through. Okay, okay. if you want to switch to your phone, please. go ahead. Um, the okay. first slide is just welcome. Thank you for joining our Otter Talk on Canine Good Citizen, or CGC for short, and Trick Dog Titles. Um, the, the Canine Good Citizen and Trick Dog are part of the AKC Family Dog Program. Um, it it's an umbrella for all of all levels of Canine Good Citizen. From um, star puppy, which is as when they're babies, to canine good citizen, and canine good citizen, the urban therapy dog, dog, um, and other more titles that just build on that canine good citizen starting point. Can you hear us, Allison? Can you hear us, Allison? Yeah, I'm, can you? I, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep, we can. Allison, I think you have two sources of sound, so we have an echo. If you could mute your computer. Yeah, I am trying to get out of it now. Dead. Kill it. There. That's good. Better. Can you hear us, Allison? Uh oh. Can you hear us, Allison? Maybe the other one is muted. Can you hear me now? Oh, we can hear hey. you. Oh, oh my so gosh, good. I am so sorry. You would no think worries. that I could do better. No worries oh. at all. <laughs> No worries at all. So I just went over that it's uh, the family dog program umbrella term for all the CGC titles. So with that, okay. you can go awesome. ahead and tell us about the CGC. Okay. So like I said, it is the CGC, the AKC family dog program is the big umbrella that covers everything like the CGC that we're going to talk about tonight. And it's always been uh, the core, you know, that's people just know CGC, but that's not that what it's all about. And with the canine good citizens, you know, we're developing those lifelong bonds with our dogs. 
we are going to have a dog that we can go out in public with and going to come up and say hi and they're not going to jump on them or bark at them. So everyone, you know, strives to have a well balanced mannered dog. But other things underneath that program, there's the AKC Puppy Star, the Community Canine, which is CGCA, Urban CGC, and then it comes, it covers activities such as AKC therapy, trick dog tests that we're going to talk about, the fit dog, and uh, temperament tests. So um, just a side note on the AKC Puppy All-Star. I mean, with Canine Good Citizens, you don't just have to say, you know, I got a puppy, so we've got to do everything before they are a year old, or you got a rescue and it says, you know, this dog needs something to do. But the, the AKC Star Puppy gives the puppy a chance. It's sort of, I call it like pre-K or kindergarten. So the star part is socialization, T for training, A for activity, and R for responsibility. So as far as a puppy trainer, our biggest thing that drives us crazy is trying to communicate with our dog what we want them to do without so many words. So it's a good base. It helps them get socialized with puppies their own age. So they're not you know, afraid when they go out in public. Um, so just a little bit of background. So what really is the, you know, the canine good citizens test? So it, it's got 10 skills. Uh, it's a training program. And you know, it wasn't too long ago, I was thinking back that the mixed breed dogs there, I don't know how many years ago for pals, but I know that our local club, when I got Murray, the mixed dog, they actually had to change their bylaws to include mixed breed dogs because their bylaws said only purebreds. So it's kind of evolved, evolved so that everybody now can participate in the AKC stuff. So um, what you're going to learn with the canine good citizens is you know, it focuses on good manners. It gives you a little bit of responsive um, obedience training. It also um, teaches responsible ownership. And of course, you know, anytime you're working with your dog, it's going to strengthen that bond that that is just, you just can't break. It just makes it so special. And so, and the good thing is there's no age minimum, except for maybe they have to have all their shots. And you can teach an old dog new tricks. You can bring, I've seen you know, five-year-old dogs come in, 10-year-old dogs that people just decided, hey, we, we want to do that. So a lot of people ask, well, do you have to have a special class or training for the canine good citizens? And the answer is no, you can train those, uh, uh, those test uh, things without a class. But I know here in town, we have one training group that actually offers a six-week course that actually just focuses on the 10 steps of the canine good citizens. The basic manners class that I'm involved, you do basic and then advance. And during the advanced skills, we, we teach the steps of canine good citizen, and then we offer the test at the end. So there is no formal training needed. We just need to focus on the 10 steps. So the other thing about canine good citizens is for those obedience people, this is a fun thing. This is not, and the evaluators, if they're not making it fun, it, it, it's supposed to be, let's just see where we are with the things that we're teaching our dog. So the thing is, you don't have to walk in an obedience heel, you know, shoulder, everything form. You don't have to say one word. You can, you can guess what? You can talk to your dog. You can repeat the cue. You can anything but actually manhandle a sit or push down. You can talk, um, you can tell the evaluator, um, let me just walk around, you know, maybe I'm a little nervous, maybe my dog just doesn't want to sit. So it's all about you focusing on your dog and your dog's needs for the test. Let's see, so uh, what does, you know, what do you, of uh, the equipment, well, thank you, Robin, for equipment. One of the things that I find a lot with when our dogs do different activities, you know, if they're doing a, like Swissies, I had a, a program with them and they pull these big, you know, weight poles. Our dogs are in the show ring and they have a slip lead. Um, but with canine good citizens, you're not allowed to have or use a pinch collar, 
a head halter, obviously no e-collars, um, but a body harness is acceptable, the martingale, and of course the slip lead because it's used in confirmation. But the corrections and the things that we normally do with the slip leads are not allowed. We want the dog to work with you without the corrections and using, using the words. You also have to have a brush and a comb that you should you know, work with. Um, you have a regular leash. All the 10 steps are required. The dog is required to be on a leash. The fees, I know when we did it at uh, Outer Hound National a couple of years ago, I think we charged $5. I've seen $10, $15. It depends on the club and who's paying for the, you know, the applications and the, the ribbons and things like that. Um, you cannot have, you cannot use treats in the CGC. Um, and let's see, does that, and then, okay. Does that cover that fees? All right, so let's just talk about the test. So, in the test items, we, I'll go through each step and I, and I know that Robin has a slide for each one, but we'll talk about it. And then if there's questions at the end. So test one, accepting a friendly stranger. This one is designed so that your dog, you're standing there with your dog, your dog must start in a sit and a stranger would come up and introduce himself. With COVID now, they haven't been allowing us to shake hands. So you just kind of walk up and you nod and say, hi, my name's Allison, how's you? And the dog can start in a sit, but, and can get up once it's started, but it can't jump, it can't show fear. And um, then you're done, it's quick and simple. The second test is sitting politely for greeting and or petting. So again, the dog starts in a sit, the friendly stranger will come up and say, hi, may I pet your dog? And at that point, you know, I test service dogs as well. So, you know, you can't just pet a service dog. You might tell your dog it's okay, or say hello, whatever your dog needs to know that some stranger's coming up to pet them. And the friendly stranger in the test should know proper dog etiquette, come up with a smell of their hand and a gentle pet down the back. And again, she, he or she can't get up, can't jump. And that's all you need for um, number two. So the third one, and this is where we run into trouble with like our outer house because they're mouthy and they're silly and they're fun and they tend to be a little, a little mouthy. So in appearance and grooming, since they're on our grooming tables a lot, one of the things that I like to train as a puppy is naming the parts of the body so that when the vet or the groomer comes up and they go to look at their ear or their paw, they don't just jerk their hand away or naturally put their mouth on you or growl. So the evaluator or the assistant will come up, they need to look in both ears, touch both of their front paws, and then run a brush down their back. So with this one, you can tell the evaluator, hey, you know, my dog's better. He's going to lay down. I'm going to show you his ear or maybe I'm gonna take his paw and hand it to you. Um, whatever is comfortable for your dog because they can't jerk it away, they can't bite mouth. Some of them are silly, they'll roll over on their back and rub their tummy. As long as they're letting you touch those body parts, um, you can pass. But most of the ones that don't pass are the ones that are just mouthy, mouthy, mouthy and don't sit still. Okay, so out for a walk. So this is one, we're just looking for that there you guys are a team so for example with an otter hound you're going to walk us a, a simple um forward a left turn an about turn a right turn and then two stops in between and the evaluator will call it out so sometimes depending on who the evaluator is maybe they're a obedience person they'll use words like forward exercise complete halt it, whatever word they use, it's still the, the same exercise. So when you're ready, you have your dog, you can say heel with me. Um, we'll say left turn, about turn, stop. We just want to see that when you stop, the dog stops, doesn't even have to sit, just can't keep going. And then you'll make your last turn, we'll call a stop. And then the exercise is finished. 
and we're not, there are some, I've seen some evaluators try to critique, but you know, if your nose, if the nose is down, you've got to do something, talk to them. Oh, you're such a good boy, you whatever, just to get their nose up off the ground so they're semi paying attention to you. Then number five, uh, walking through a crowd. So a lot of times it just looks like the walking dead. You know, you're walking through with your dog and there's people all around. And what we're seeing is that you can walk through a crowd. The dog isn't like, you know, sniffing their butt or jumping on them. You have command and you're, as you're walking, um, that's all. We just want to see that you have control. And that one's pretty, that's pretty simple. Just, you know, just keeping their attention and, and walking around through there. And they can't show like shyness with people walking by. And um, that's, that's number five. So then the obedience part starts. And sometimes I find most people are the most nervous for a sit down and stay. So with this exercise, it's a verbal sit. So you can't, you know, you, they, if they're already sitting, it doesn't count. So you get them up, you say, sit, they sit, a little bit of a pause, you cue down, they're down, and then that part's done. So for the stay, I, you decide, is, is my, does my dog do better with a down stay or a sit stay? And at this point, you'll take off your regular leash. There is a 20 foot leash laying stretched out on the ground. You must take your leash off and connect the leash to your dog. Now I've seen this done two ways because AKC says all exercise have to be on leash. Sometimes if the leash is just stretched out for 20 feet, you've hooked it, you've put the dog in and say a down stay, you don't have to pick up the leash. You just walk to the end of the, of the 20 feet. You don't stay down there long. You can repeat your cue, stay stay you can even walk backwards facing your dog but when you get to the end of that 20 feet you turn around you go right back to your dog and reward them and if they sit up like if they're sitting and they kind of move a little bit as long as they don't move from the position you still pass that part of the exam but you definitely don't want to hang out at the end just come right back and then reward them or exercise finished or however you want to um, and, and the exercise. Number seven, coming when called. So you do those one right after the other. So the long leash remains on the dog. So with this one, you could put them in a sit, stay or a down weight, you know, depending on your cues weight, because you're going to call them to you. You go 10 feet, which it's usually marked on the 20 foot leash with a little piece of tape or a different color. You go to your 10 feet. You call the dog, comes to you, doesn't have to front and sit, just has to happily come to you and the exercise is over. And depending on what words you use, it doesn't matter if you say stay or wait, the goal is to see that she's gonna to respond to you and come when called. So reaction to another dog, everyone's favorite. It's, it's tough. I've done this test outside with you know all dogs walking around. But you, when most of the time you come back to the class where you've done your training and you used to see a bunch of dogs in there, it's empty. You're the only dog. And then the, react, the, the neutral dog will come out sort of like the Wizard of Oz. The doors open and boom, there appears a dog. So the reaction, you have to be prepared to work with your dog. If you use a leave it, if you look, watch me, look at me, whatever it takes to prepare that dog to not to react because if he barks, lunges, even playful, then you may not pass. So when you're ready, if you walk your dog on your left side, the neutral dog person will walk their dog on the opposite side. You'll meet, it's about, I think it's like um, 10, uh, 15, 10, 15 feet apart. You'll walk, you used to stop midway and shake hands. Well, COVID again, right now, you still don't shake. You just nod, but you, but what I coach people to do is pay attention to your dog because what happens is you've got, oh, I've passed the neutral dog and then they do a back turn. They go right behind your butt and they lunge at the dog or play at the dog. So you keep the focus on you as you pass through the dog all the way, you keep going. Don't stop, just keep going and then come back around and, and that exercise is finished.
but that's usually the toughest one. Um, oh, did we do coming on call already? So I think I did that, reaction to distraction. So when I'm testing reaction to distraction, I usually combine number nine with walking through a crowd and I'll call it out so that the, the people aren't scared, but you're walking through the crowd. And at some point I call for a visual distraction. Most of the time we use a walker, um, we've used crutches, we've used wheelchairs, but the person in the visual distraction doesn't get um, five to 10 feet away from your dog, but just so the dog can see it moving. And again, they can look at it and say, what is that? But they can't you know, shy away, they can't bark at it, they can't panic and run away. And then while they're walking away after the visual and they're the owner and the dog's back are to us, I'll call for the um, auditory. Sometimes we will drop a big metal like a food bowl and all the dogs are, what, a food bowl? So they startle and then they recover and they move on. And that's all we're looking for. They don't, they, you know, if they don't startle, it's like, okay, cool. But if they do and they recover, then we wanna praise them. And that ends that, ends that exercise. The final one, um, most dogs we don't have a problem with and how often do we leave our dogs with a stranger? But we use it as an example, even if it's a friend, listen, I have to run to the restroom. Could you hold my dog for about three minutes and I'll be right back. So before I hand my dog off to the stranger or the person who's gonna be holding for three minutes, you tell them, hey, don't talk in a high squeaky voice or just pet them gently or ignore them or you may choose to say, hey, I want them in a down stay. So when you get ready to go, you say down, stay, mom will be right back. And then you walk out of the door for three minutes. And during that time, you know, the, the person holding the dog can talk to the dog. They can pet whatever you instructed. But if at some time they start really uh, getting really nervous, pacing, barking, trying to jump in the lap, um, you know, just there's no way to really kind of calm them, then we'll call it. One little bark or like, where'd mom go is fine as long as they recover. Because three minutes is, is a really long time. And, um, and then the exercise is finished. Now, with that said, during the 10 steps, and I think most evaluators are the same, let's just say your dog didn't stay, got up, and, and the evaluator said, well, you didn't pass that, but let's go ahead and finish the whole test. So if you've done all the other nine exercises correct, what I do is if I'm testing several people, they can choose to wait till everyone's done and then I'll bring them back and we'll test that one exercise. Some evaluators will, will might have them go through the whole thing, but they've done everything right. We want you to pass um, and, I'll, and we'll give you another chance. So that's the way I feel it should be because it's supposed to be, be fun. And we're so nervous sometimes. We had someone last week, they couldn't even get the dog to pass number one. The dog would not sit. She'd sit, they'd walk around, sit, we'd walk around, sit. Five, we gave her at least three to five minutes. And we just said, well, you know, we can't really go on. Let's go, let's try down and, and go from there. So that's, that's Canine Good Citizens. So. After Canine Good Citizens, and sometimes at like nationals when we have a lot of people, the next level is Community Canine or CGCA. All that does, and you have to do these in order, um, the Community Canine, there are 10 steps as well, but we've gone from being in a very controlled environment in a room out to like real life. So if we're out and about, like we do tracking and stuff like that, and there's people around, it's a really good time to test the community canine because you can set up real live events. Like for example, um, one of the ones is there's three people sitting around with their dogs and a person comes up with a backpack and puts it down. And so it's, it goes to real life. And then after canine, um, um, community canine, there's urban canine, which that one, I, I've never tested it because there's just never been um, enough people or interest because that really goes out into the city and the towns and you go into businesses, you ride buses, you go on elevators, a really good 
test for uh, maybe a possible therapy dog, search and rescue dog. Um, it really, really puts your dog to the test. And so, um, a lot more distractions. Yeah. yeah, a lot, a lot, lot more distractions, and especially like getting on and even some, um, therapy dog testing is, you know, you have to go on a bus or there may be there's, you know, um, an earthquake and there's all kinds of things around there. So your dog has to be calm. And even like we're in the hotels when our dogs are riding the elevators, you know, they've never done that before. So there are tons of distractions for the urban and I would love to be able to test that. And then therapy dogs, we get the canine good citizens to me, if star is like kindergarten, then canine good citizen is, is your marker. It's first grade, it says, hey, we have a good relationship. You know some basic obedience. Well, maybe we could be a therapy dog. And not all dogs love to be petted. Not all dogs love people, but it's a good test to see how they react. And as you add those distractions to the next level, then you can decide, hey, maybe this is a good, ther a good therapy dog. Did I leave anything out, Robin? I think that's good. I think I think you covered that. And and the therapy dog can be as um, simple as like a reading pause program, or as advanced as you know like true therapy dogs that are working in hospital and nursing home and that kind of scenarios. Um, but all of them pretty much depend on a CGC as a foundation. Yeah. And, and the AKC, there's other, there's other therapy groups out there. Um, the one in town that we work with is not AKC, it's called Pet Partners. And again, the dog has to be a year old, so that's plenty of time. And then when you take, you, you kind of decide, you say, well, maybe I want my dog to go into children's cancer ward. Maybe I just want to read, like Robin said, do a reading program. When you do your therapy, you and your dog will be evaluated at the level you know, if your dog, you want to go into cancer and they say, okay, you know, you have a good leave it. It's good with people. Nothing bothers it. We'll grade you to go into that environment. So it kind of helps you set your, your goals. And, and just to, to compound on that, there are a ton of therapy dog programs um, out there um, and all different levels. So if you if you you know think your dog is is a good candidate for that i would encourage anybody to uh, investigate all of the different programs that are out there because usually there's there's something for everybody absolutely okay so we're on to trick dog yep. okay um you know trick dog one of the things about teaching your dog tricks just like obedience it's so much fun because I hear all the time, I walk my puppy for two miles and she's still got lots of energy, but we forget that the mental training, the obedience that we do, the tracking, the nose work, all those things work the brain part of the dog. And then some dogs are just naturally tricked. They'll do something funny, like roll over on their belly or they'll um, sit up and wave their little paws. And you can put that to a cue. And next thing you know, you've got a trick. So with um, the trick testing, trick dog has several levels. And of course I didn't mention with the CGC, you know, once you complete your title, you'll get CGC at the end of your dog's name. And all of these events, you can add titles to your dog. So the AKC novice trick, I do this a lot with, in conjunction with CGC because when you complete your CGC, you only have to do five tricks to get your trick dog novice. So, and a lot of the, the tricks on the novice um, bark on cue. Well, you know, um, Katie and Penny can bark and can be quiet and loud. Um, fetch a ball, not so good with otter hounds, at least mine. Um, we had some do sit in a box. I think Diane did that one time at, at nationals. Um, high five. If you're doing any agility work, I mean, jumping over a bar, who do that, puppy push-ups. And the thing in novice, uh, one of the rules is each trick, be, oh, let me back up. Before you go in, you have to pre-select the five tricks. You can't say, oh, that one didn't work. Let me do another one. Oh, no, that one did. So think about it. And each trick has to be done three times. 
and you can have treats and you can talk and you can praise and you can whatever. They just have to do it three times and move on to the other. So most of these really are obedience things, push up, sit down, you know, just command. So it's really easy. You could get a CGC and a trick dog novice in the same day. One thing I'll interject here too is on some, um, like I've done all my CGC work at a confirmation show that happened to be offering it. And the AKC oftentimes will have a lot of equipment there. So they'll have a balance beam. They'll have a hoop to jump through. They'll have a bunch of stuff that you can just walk your dog through it. So some of it you might not even need to have practiced ahead of time. If your dog is treat motivated and you know that, okay, I can get that dog to walk on a balance beam if I have a piece of chicken, you can write that down as, okay, these are my five tricks. I'm going to do the balance beam, the, you know, jump through the hoop and the, you know, these things based on what equipment is there too. That can be, uh, uh, helps it to be easier a lot of times if you have that equipment because your dog is naturally kind of curious about that equipment anyway. So if you hold a treat on one side of the hoop and they jump through it and then you do it two more times, well, bang, that's one of your tricks. If you can get them to walk on the balance beam a few inches and they get a treat, bang, that's the second one. So um, if you're doing it at a confirmation show and they happen to have equipment, capitalize on that. Yes, and also at the very bottom, you'll see other handler's choice. So there may be something cute um, for example, Murray, I had trained him. If I sneeze, I'd put a box of Kleenex and if I sneeze, he would grab a Kleenex and bring it to me. Or some people will say funny things. Would you rather be a poodle or an otter hound or play dead? So you just can put anything you want into it and you, but you have to, of course, check it ahead of time. Yep. Okay. And then, um, so the intermediate is again, there are, you have to do 10 um, tricks from this list. There are no treats involved. Still, each one has to be three times and they're, they're pretty creative. I mean, um, roll, roll over, crawl, and then they have a few specifics like fetch might be 20 feet away and deliver it to your hand. Um, there's another one, uh, wave goodbye. Weave poles if you're doing agility. Um, pause up. Who am I? I know I Antler can do that really well. Um, so it's again you're building you're building that bond with your dog. And some dogs just love tricks. And there's a lot of options. Ten is a lot, but there isn't anything really in there that's too hard. And some of them are things that you've already done, like healing with an automatic sit. If you've been mm -hmm. working with your dog, right. we already have that one. Um, and like a wobble board, you might think, well, that that might be hard. Well, that one I've had really good luck with. I start my babies walking over a wobble board from the time they start walking. And so if you just have a piece of plywood with a little rocker on the bottom of it, chances are your dog is curious. They'll walk on that. And that can be one of these tests. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we get into advance. Now we're getting into some kind of more serious things, but again, lots of options. Um, let's see, one of my favorite, I mean, jump into your arms. Well, that one's not gonna work so much for, but uh, you know, you see so many dogs in agility, like the border collies, when they finish, bam, they jump up into your arms. Um, I've seen make your bed where they lay on a, a blanket and they grab it and they roll over. Sing, we can do that, sing, smile, sneeze, the tissues out of the box. There's just, and what I tell people is just get the list, see what your dog does naturally, and then just work on it, you know, um, and call it something. And then you eventually, all trick testing, and everybody probably knows, is shaping behavior. So, you know, if one paw goes up one time and you click it and give a treat, they say, well, maybe I'll do that paw again click and treat. Next thing you know, you got to say goodbye. And there it is. So shaping to me is the most fun in training because you can see the dog, you're not telling him to do anything. He's doing it on his own and he's going to learn it and, and remember it. So that's why trick testing is, is, is always fun. And again, after each one of these, you do have to go in order. So the first title would be a, what they call a TKN or trick 
dog novice. Intermediate is TKI. Advanced is TKA. And now performer. Um, won't see me there, but if you ever watch like uh, America's Got Talent and you see these dogs go out there and they do all this stuff. So when you do performer, it's a short routine. Not only do you have to have 10 tricks, but you have to have three props. So the prop could be a ring, you know, a hoop that they've gone through. It could be um, walking across um, a, a board or um, like a dog walk, but it's sort of starting with a routine. And I, I have never tested it, the porn performer or elite, because one, I got kicked out of dance school when I was five, so I never would do that anyway. Um, but you can get the TKP and then the elite performer. That's 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 a big routine there you have to have like a story a script of you know maybe um i think one time on um america's got talent there was i think it was a german shepherd and a girl that was from the military and they had this whole routine and she fell over and the dog did cpr on her and they did all kinds of stuff and then you have to uh, do the story, work through with music and things like that, and then have five props to get your uh, TKE. Which and that would one, be fun. That one, I think they do on a video still, um, where you okay. do the whole thing and submit the video to a panel of judges. Um, I think it's still that way. We okay. stopped at our um, advanced trick dog. Um, we never, because it used to be yeah. that it ended at performer, and the performer was what they have as the elite now. Um, right. And so you have to have it really choreographed. You have to have an assistant be videoing it and you have to have the different props like a bouquet of flowers or a bed or whatever. So a whole little story like, you know, Alice in Wonderland or Snow White and the Seven, you know, just a whole little uh, story that goes with it. And I was never creative enough to do that part. No, I wasn't either. <laughs> so that's as, that's as far as I went with it. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, one of the things with canine good citizens and, you know, just like all of us, we're all a little type A, you know, have to admit it, but we get a puppy and we're like, oh, you know, he's going to do, we're going to get our obedience title. We're going to do agility. We're going to do rally. We're going to do tracking. We're going to scent work. We're going to do all the performance sports. And they're not even six months old and potty trained and done with teething yet. So, but the canine good citizens, you can't do agility if you don't have a good start line stay. You know, you can't do obedience or you can, but until you have a good recall or, you know, a good heel. Um, so and rally the same thing is so the canine good citizens is always a good marker. You know, it's a tight. It's the first title that most people get. And then it says, hey, we're good at this. We're going to kill on and we can do other things. So it's it's a good it's a foundation and and it's a good measurement, too foundation and it's and it's fun it should be fun for both you and your dog and the evaluators i have found it's um way more casual than formal obedience training um i always get intimidated when i've tried to do formal obedience training and try to get my companion dog title i just i have a personal struggle with that um where rally you can give your dog more than one command and then CGC and Trick Dog, it's even easier than that, where they're very lenient. It's not like, oh, you gave your dog a second command. They don't care about that stuff. It's all That's about right. getting the dog to perform the, the right. actual trick. So it's right. way, way more laid back and, and friendly, easier, and casual, um, in my opinion. One thing that we didn't cover is if you have been working with your dog, where do you find a CGC test to go test at? So a lot of times you can go on, I think Robin, you've got the links. You can go to the AKC and yep. click on CGC evaluators in your area. And then um, it'll come up and say, you know, who, who is an evaluator? There's a couple of people I know in town. I mean, if, if there's a few people that are in a club and decide they want to do the canine good citizens, you know, I've got to have a handler. I've got to have three people for a crowd. Um, so if you have like five people, you can set up and do the canine good citizen. So if you find an evaluator and maybe you and two other friends, you know, don't have a class or aren't going to a national, um, more than likely we, we try to offer in our class. And then I know our club does it a couple times a year. 
And it's it's oftentimes at a national specialty show where yes. the breed club will offer it. And it doesn't really matter if you're in that breed or not. Like say the um, curly coated retrievers are having a specialty at a confirmation show that's in your area. Um, you can go do the CGC testing at even you know somebody else's national as long as they open it to other breeds. Um, so that's that's a good opportunity um, and they usually have if you look at the events they'll oftentimes have the cgc testing in the akc events calendar as well um, that's a good place to find it too um so we have extra time um i'm going to go through and let's go through the what makes the canine the community canine or the advanced cdc different than the basic CDC. So let's just go through those 10 items since we have extra time. Okay. So I've got the, the canine good citizen advanced or the community canine, they're interchangeable. I've got those 10 steps up. Yeah, because so the dog stands or sits or lies down and waits under control by the owner. And then it gives you options because maybe you don't have different things to do. So a lot of times with that one, you go you want to go up to sit down to do a registration. You put your dog in a sit and they are down, whatever one they like while you fill out, you know, paperwork. We've done um, groceries. Like if, if the dog sits down while you put groceries in a bag. So there's all kinds of different things. Now we're, now we're moving in this in a sit stay. So walking on a loose leash for number two, it's not in a ring. It's still a left turn, right turn, stop but then we add a fast and a slow pace. And again, we're outside. There's a lot of just natural distractions. So again, it's loose. We stress loose leash walking, which is hard a lot of times with an otter hound and with any other breed, but you can train that, you know, we'll have questions about, you know, dog, the otter hounds, for example, I mean, they're strong. And in the show ring, we've got this little tiny chain and they do what they need to do. But out with people and things, there are a lot of different um ways to to handle the dog without having to pull your arm out and um then when you're walking through the crowd the choice i think um yeah sidewalks um through parks again more distractions still walking nice on a leash and walking through a crowd um, but not necessarily in a room in a building Right, exactly. Just, just more each, each level. It's the same thing. We just, what we should be doing anyway, when, you know, I'll tell some of my clients, when you're, when you can go to Lowe's and put your dog in a sit stay and walk and, you know, 20 feet on a leash and the, um, a cart goes by, or there's a beep beep with something going by, you've done great. Now take that same thing go down to a, uh, you know, a fresh market out wide, a natural place, a, a soda city. We have it here where you have a bunch of vendors and then put them in a sit, stay with other dogs. So each time you do, you think you've nailed it, add more distractions. And that's, that's the key to building the, the foundation. Just, just one note in California, all testing or most of the testing that I've seen is done outside. Yeah. So, Even the, yeah. so the CGC, CGCA um, is done outside. It can be done indoors, but the obedience, uh, maybe because of the climate, right? The obedient right. clubs usually do it outside. Petco's, PetSmart, or like typical indoor facilities, they, they would do that testing indoors. So yeah, a lot of all, all our clubs and stuff do it indoors, but usually when you go to a specialty or some other thing, it's it's more than likely it's outside. And sometimes I really think, yeah, it's more distractions, but it's it's different than being in a room with no people and quiet and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yep. Here here in the southeast, the basic canine good citizen is always inside, whether you're doing it at a training club or a dog show. And the community canine is always done outside. Like if your show grounds is a fair rounds or has an outdoor area, then the advanced uh, CGC is, is outdoors. But all of ours, the basic one is indoors. Like um, oftentimes even in a show and a confirmation show ring after the 
after the show or in a separate ring, like actually with matting and stuff, sometimes, sometimes at, at our show in Atlanta, the um, AKC sets up outside the um, superintendent's space. So it's actually just in the middle of the whole show, but at that one space. So it's not designated by a ring or anything like that, but um, always indoors. Yep. Yeah. And the Midwest is very similar to that as well, at least from what I've experienced. Yeah, it's you want to reduce the level of distractions. I mean, anytime you start any kind of obedience, I feel is that like sit, you know, we need dogs don't generalize well. So, you know, sitting in their in your kitchen is different than sitting in your den and it's different than sitting in your front yard. So the level as the dog matures is giving them all those opportunities to sit in many places. And just like uh, the one in number six, where we've gone up to say, hello, how you doing this time? And it's happened to me with um, COVID. So I'm going to a house, I knock on the door, I've got a briefcase, I've got a mask on, I've got a bag in my hand and people open the door and the puppy goes, ah, you know what? Or the puppy's like, hey, you're here to visit me. So it's different when I come and you approach and you put something down beside them because they're really unsure. And then you add in, leave it. So the dog has to walk by at the owner's instruction, leave food um, or a ball. Some people use, um, like they do in rally, they'll put something with a cover on it so the dog can't actually get it, but it's a smell and you have to do leave it, which, you know, again, if you don't have a, very, a good leave it, don't think about being a therapy dog in a hospital or, um, you know, any other place like that where they can, like, especially in, in some of the nursing homes, you know, people are always offering something to your dog while you're going through and go, oh, you know, no thanks, leave it, it's okay. Um, and then number eight, um, 20 owner walks away with their back to the dog. So that's different than here we were, we were, we could look at our dog, but when we turn and break eye contact, that's totally different. So again, the next, the next level of uh, distractions. And um, let's see. Recall. Oh, yeah. Recall. So this is fun. I do this one a lot. So you've got, um, I'll have you on one end, the dog away, and then in between you and the dog, there may be uh, somebody there playing with a ball or somebody crinkling some paper or um, what else have we done? Just something that you've got to get your dog past that distraction. And then, um, let's see, did that, oops, I lost it. Oh no, I lost it. The last one is the hallway or doorway yeah. or passageway. Yeah, I lost the, um, your, your page with but, my, with my notes on it. I lost oh, it. So, you know, it, it's the, it's yeah. so, yeah. Just the small, they have to go through a designated like doorway or passage. Oh, pretend, right. A pretend doorway. And sometimes we'll just set up two chairs and they, you have to, let's see, they go through first or you go through. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, okay. I wanted, I wanted to say one more thing because we have been talking a lot about um, the, 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 what the CGC is for the dog. But with every class I take, I actually learn how to be a better handler. And I learn what works for one dog and doesn't work for another dog. That's right. Uh, I, I, I only work with Otterhound, so I don't know any better. However, I did <laughs> see Puppy Poodle potty trained in five days, which was amazing. But that's another yeah. story. Yeah, so, I get it. Um, so with otter hounds, every otter hound is different, um, and everyone likes different things. So with CGC, what you find out uh, uh, in preparation to this C CGC, you find out what your dog likes, because one dog will be good at obedience and the other one will hate it. It will prefer rally or scent work or therapy work, right? Or will be good at tricks and other dogs will not be good at tricks. And you also learn how to teach them better. And yeah. you know, you 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 just you just improve your skills as a 
amateur dog trainer. I mean, yeah, um, absolutely. I, I think that that is important. And with that, you also build your confidence of being around your dog and other dogs as well. So I, I, I think that it's all around good experience for the human, not, not just for the dog, kind of reverse it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Excellent point. That's, that's yes. an excellent point. And it also like, it teaches you to learn your dog's language, you know, what mm -hmm. works for them. Um, every dog is a little bit different. And even if they're, you know, all dogs within your same household, you're exactly right. Some prefer one method of training. Some prefer different activities. When I tried to do scent work with um, Ellie, she loved it. When I tried it with a different breed of dog, they're like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. We had no desire to even do that but some of those dogs can do tricks and it really enjoy those tricks where Ellie would be like, serious? No. Mm -hmm. So it really I, teaches you mm -hmm. to learn how to talk to your dog and figure out your method of training and your teamwork and what it takes to, to speak the same language. And the other thing too, is there's never an, an age, you know, my, if you're on Facebook, my, my long haired dachshund, who's going to be 14 in January, I took Adler to nose work class. He loves doing it at home. But when he got to the class, he was like, this is boring, sat there like this. So I said, well, my dachshund's really good at it, but gosh, she's 11 years old. And I wish I had started earlier. She has, she's the only dog I've had ever that has such a drive. You know, I see these people with border collies and I go, mm -hmm but she loves it. And she, we finished and got her novice total title and she's got some legs in advance and she's almost 14. So it's never too late to you try one thing and you know, you just don't know. Yeah. You don't know. And sometimes you have no even inkling that that might even be on your oh. scope of things. Um, and CGC is a good introduction to some of that. It's also um, helpful just because it, this, so the basic CGC is the prerequisite for the more advanced CGC titles. And then it's also, it's not necessarily a prerequisite for the novice trick title, but it eliminates half of the tricks on the yeah. first um, trick title. So it's a, always a good place to start. And it starts basically with manners. And that's something that every dog is much more um, fun to live with if they have manners. So it's basically organized manners. Is how yeah, that that's, that's a good point. Organized manners. All right, so if anybody has any questions, now is the time, or Carmen, if anybody had any questions in the chat, if you will let us know of any of those. Um, and if not, if anybody has any verbal um, questions, feel free to unmute your microphone and ask away. No questions in chat, but I did have a personal question. Um, <laughs> going back to <laughs> going back to the actual uh, trick dog list. Uh, let's say that you taught your dog the actual trick, but you used a different cue term. Is That's that okay. a hindrance or matter? You don't have to use their cue. Okay, no, no. it's the behavior. It's the behavior, it. right? Cool. Yep. Cool. <laughs> We're a lot farther along than I thought then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. They don't care what you say to your dog. You can even use hand signals. So hand signals is one of the actual tricks. Say tricks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you can, you, it doesn't matter what you say to your dog. It can be a hand signal. It can be like, I say kennel. And that means my dog goes walking in the, walk into the kennel, opens the kennel, gets mm -hmm. in the kennel, shuts the door. So I just say kennel and they do that. And so on this it's kennel up. You don't have to say kennel up. Mm -hmm. um, and like for shake hands, I say paw and they do that. So it makes no difference what you uh, label oh. it or cue cool. it or name it. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, because I use a lot of like hand signals with the more common ones, you know, sit down, stay, all that stuff. But uh, for ones that are like under where it's like, you know, go in the tunnel, go under your legs, go, you know, stuff like that, you know, it, it, didn't match this. I'm just sitting here like, okay, how am I going to retrain, <laughs> retrain that? Yeah. And but that's one reason why they have you give them. So when they, when you're going to be evaluated, there's a piece of paper, an application form, and they have you check off. Um, I even, I have it here. I can even show it to you. You check off what you're going to have them do. And so like that, by 
by having it listed, you can say whatever you want to make them do that. And then they know, and you can even tell the evaluator, okay, this is going to be my shake hand, right. but then mm -hmm. you tell your dog bananas. And That's right. as long as they do the behavior, you get checked off for your shake hands. Cool. That's right. Awesome. Thank you. And they're very lenient and helpful. They want your dog to pass. Yeah, which is, absolutely. For me, really cool. After getting kicked out of uh, companion dog trials, I, I like having these. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions at all from anybody i just wanted to um mention uh about gable he he went through the cgc uh, he surprised me that he you know i hadn't really worked with him all that much to do anything and he was um he was perfect and uh, I didn't expect that. But a few years ago, maybe three or four years ago, um, I was at a show and I have friends who have mastiffs and those are, um, you know, they're not, they're not hounds, they're mastiffs, but they were doing the temperament testing. And, um, and she said to me, you know, Gable's a really good candidate for that. And I, had no idea what it entailed, but she said it's more sophisticated than the CGC. And I have to tell you, I was blown away by that because what they did, and he passed, he passed, but the distraction was an umbrella that was opening and closing and waving around. And the stranger was somebody, that movie where the clowns are so awful, that a guy came out and just like that and then they also um the other one was the loud noise they they actually shot a gun and i i mean i this is easy compared to what that was but um i think if he hadn't had the cgc training those things would not have come as uh, a, a non-surprise he was able to handle the new things um, and that surprised me, but uh, we don't hear about that happening with otter hounds very often. That's a good point. We, um, in my other breed, we always temper do the temperament testing, and uh, it's a on the temperament test. You cannot have any 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 interaction with your dog, like zero interaction. You can so like they have to touch their nose to that umbrella. Well, you can't tell them, you know, touch the umbrella. You can talk to the umbrella, but you can't talk. To your dog and so you really want them to have that confidence and that level of you know curiosity and not be it's all about in the temperament test and same with the cdc it's not so much about their reaction it's about their recovery so like when there's a gunshot they can be freaked out but then they have to recover right away um, when they walk over the x-pen they have to do it without you know freaking out um, when the scary stranger comes at them they can be, you know, concerned. They can even bark and and be, you know, on that specific station. They can even be aggressive, but they have to recover again. So it's it's all, you know, really good input for your dog and really good input for you to see how your dog behaves in those uh, situations. Yeah, and I always um, say believe in your dog. You know, some people say otter hounds, not trainable, stubborn, many different um, um, words, which I don't agree with. Um, but otter hounds will surprise you. They are trainable. They are smart. They are social. You just have to give them a chance and work with them a little bit. And even if you work a little bit, you'll be surprised how fast they advance and how, how, how wonderful they can be. They are, actually. Very true. Very true. And you have to listen to your dog too. like believe in them. Like when I first started doing scent work with Ellie, Ellie was a baby and she, her um, method of telling me where the scent was, was just one quick little glance at you. Well, if you weren't really watching and believing her, you were going to miss it. So you had to really believe in her that, okay, when she did that, she was serious. She meant that, okay, it's in that box. So that taught me to really listen to your dog and believe in your dog, you know, you, cause you can't tell which box it's in. You have no idea. And, uh, 
it, it was really good training on listening to your dog and having that language that you both understand. Yes, scent work is actually a handler training. Your dog trains you. That that is, yep. that is my Absolutely. my most recent realization that it's not me training the dog, it's the dog training me. Right. You're, right. Just, you're teaching your dog how to train you, you know, like it's, okay. It's the revenge. It's the revenge <laughs> after all the obedience and rally. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Carmen, is there another question in the chat? I can't access it. No, we did get a thank you from Joanne Render. She said, great info. Oh, good. Um, awesome. Any other questions at all from anybody? Uh, Ozzy would like to know if it has to be kiss on the cheek because he just likes the lip nope. thing. Got to be the lips. Got to be the lips. And he's a very good kisser, I have to say. She's just Abby's an evaluator. Best. You can be your cheek. Yeah, yeah, it can be all right. My dogs kissed me on my cheek. Um, oh, Adler's best as best is kiss on the lips and do it in yes. front of your friends so you have the beard and everything, and everybody <laughs> freaks out. <laughs> yes, we just do the lip thing. We do cheeks in our house. Um, so I want to invite everybody to join us next time, two weeks from tonight, on December second. We have our follow-up Otter Talk on Rally and Obedience. And uh, Ashka and Diane Quist are going to help us with that yeah. one. They are our Rally and Obedience experts. My expertise ends at trick titles, NCGCs, and scent work. I, I gave up on uh, obedience several years ago. I just plain stopped. Um, so I did recruit Becky. I recruit awesome. Becky to help us with obedience because she has much more obedience uh, experience with uh, Petey, the the honorary otter hound. Yes. Awesome. I have done rally in classes and training, but never trialed in it. And when I did obedience, it was before they had rally. When you and uh, I did it on a two young dog, and I um I human error made mistakes and double commands and stuff like that so i i dq'd on every single trial and so i hung up my obedience hat it was so, the human wasn't it was it? Yeah. all the human well i have to say okay so wait a minute on <laughs> one of them it was not the human on my very first trial weekend with my eight month old 95 pound black russian puppy it was October and it was very, very cold. And black Russians in the cold are very exuberant and boisterous and happy. And uh, we were doing our off lead uh, healing and then the uh, sit and then the recall. And so he realized he was not on a leash on the healing. And so he got very excited and he started jumping up and leaping and grabbing my coat pocket and getting all excited well then i put him in his sit stay and i walked back to do the recall and it was like he did everything but paw the dirt like a bull before he took off so he came i said you know boris come and he charged he ran as fast as he possibly could right at me and i accidentally when he was running at me i accidentally flinched i went just a little bit and she said that was a second command so we got dq oh. had i let him just had I stood like a statue and not raised my shoulder, I would have been okay. But I was scared to death he was going to run me down. And he didn't. He sat like a perfect gentleman when he got to me. But because I flinched, I got a DQ for a second command, which I kind of hurt my feelings. And then I, did, I, I continued to have errors like that. It was all human error. But I felt like if you had a 95 pound dog running at me right now, no matter which dog it was that I had, how much confidence in i was still probably flinch we all would if it makes probably. you feel any better uh as as a youngin i was teaching an otter hound recalls and uh she happened to be 20 feet away and came full bore and we both went into the wall so <laughs> <laughs> oh, Adler, yeah Adler loves when i do front like you know it's different than calm you know and, and touch so i stand like a statue like you said but he used to be like a tigger. He would run, hit my chest, bounce, and sit down. 
So we've worked on that now where we're not getting as much, but that was his, when I say front, he gets so happy, like, oh, and he was like, so yeah, he's coming. Yeah, I, mine was all human error. It was all my bad. It's okay. You've recognized it. I <laughs> and have. You've moved on. And you've I done- have, and I can't even, I have to, total transparency. I can't imagine doing companion dog with an otter hound. I can imagine doing rally. I can imagine doing trick dog and CGC and scent work and all of that and agility, but I can't imagine doing companion dog with an otter hound. I just, I don't know. There's something in my brain that says, wow, I don't know if I could train that. I was watching utility obedience last weekend. I was stewarding and uh, could not imagine an otter hound doing that. Maybe, I don't know, Diane, if you tried it, but I was like, there's some things that are not going to happen. And that's one of them. Yeah. I, I, I can't, we have a lot of friends that do, you know, have, you know, master level obedience titles and stuff like that, but I, I can't imagine an otter hound. I just can't. Yeah. Roger was doing utility. Wow. That is seizures. Made him so he couldn't jump. So I, I quit. Unfortunately, yeah, that's, that's amazing that you got him to that yeah. level. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Kudos. A lot of fun. Yeah. Well, see, there's a goal now for the new puppy. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Todd. <laughs> Todd. No Todd stress, no big, pressure. Todd has big paw, paw prints. Todd, to that's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Well, I appreciate everybody coming tonight. Allison, thank you very much. Ashka, okay. Carmen, thank you very much. Um, I look forward to seeing everybody on the next one. Um, I will be recording or not recording, it already was recorded. I will be adding this recording to our YouTube library of uh, Otter Talks so people in the future can refer back to it. Um, And I will also send everybody a thank you for coming email with the links of the uh, AKC stuff that we covered tonight as well. And if there's anything else that you would like uh, included in that um, email, just uh, shoot me an email or something that say, says, hey, will you include you know, X, Y, Z? And I will uh, include that as well. So thank you everybody for coming. Hopefully we Good see you next see time. Everybody. Good to see everybody. Thanks yeah. everybody. Bye, Granny. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Allison. Thanks, Ashka. You're Thanks, Robin. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Robin. <laughs>